Chevy one squawk ident, wind 160 at 3, altimeter 3050. And I'm showing a target at about your 12 o'clock, 4 miles southwestbound Cessna at 7,400 unverified. Roger, ident, zero to take. Yeah, we've got the traffic visual and our altitude is 4,971. I'm glad they can see us because I can't see them. Hello. One of the reasons I wanted to get my private pilot license in the first place was to be able to take friends flying, just to be able to take them up, do some sightseeing, check out the area from a different perspective, that sort of thing. So what you're about to see is my first post PPL passenger flight, post PPL passenger flight, pretty much a lot of peace. Went up with my friend Brad, just did a little local sightseeing tour. The cool thing about it is that Brad's a really avid cyclist uh, and he, you know, we'll go motorbiking and stuff as well. So he's been around to a lot of the areas that we got to fly over. So it was really cool just to kind of be able to take them up and show them the whole thing from the sky and everything and it was a beautiful day except for the cloud around the airport uh, it was pretty cloudy around the airport and uh, other than that yeah it was a fantastic flight and there was some turbulence around some, well you'll see it anyway this is a special flight for me because like I say this is part of the reason this is one of the reasons I got my private pilot license so let's watch a flight here we go all right so Basically, yeah, we're going to do the original plan just in reverse. So the plan is uh, up to Heffley. Yeah. We'll go up over Heffley Lake. So okay. we'll basically be going over Mount Paul Road like we're going, like we're driving the Seven Peaks. Yeah. Seven Peaks is there. Then we'll turn back down, come back down to Monte Creek. And then if air is clear, we'll kind of head down south, down to Lac Lejeune here, and then we'll come back. Good. Now, unfortunately, you're not going to very get very good views of the south side, but... Oh. Hopefully on the way back it'll look a bit better. Oh, there's that pipeline. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's where they're doing all that work for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I find this interesting because when I'm on the highway, all I can see is the side of this hill. Right, yeah. You don't see what's on top of it. Yeah. A couple of little lakes up in here. Yeah, it's really cool. I figured there'd probably be some good trails and stuff up here somewhere, but... But uh, you can come and see, like, it looks like snowmobile tracks or something yeah. on the mountain down yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I'm just looking for the roads too, because is there a there's a valley right here? Can I take a road from the um, Sun Peaks to Pinatan, or is it all four by four? You know, I actually don't know if there's a road back in there. Um, I mean, you think there must be, right? Like, well, there'd probably be some sort of old logging or not yeah. logging roads, but yeah, old yeah. road. This is one mountain I've never skied. Oh yeah. Yeah, my dad told me about it years ago when it was called Todd. Yeah. And then uh, he skied it, but I never did. And I've always wanted to. Yeah. They've got what was well known about the mountain was that it had a five mile 8K um, ski run. Oh, okay. Wow. 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 Yeah. <laughs> and it was a, like a beginner run. Yeah. But. It was a big bang for the buck, because yeah. you could ski all day and only do one run. <laughs> <laughs> so it could be hard to see, but basically in front of us and by below is Nisconleth Lake. Um, oh, there we go. And then Shushwap Lake is just kind of barely, you can just barely catch a bit of Shushwap Lake up in the hills there. Got it. I wonder how far up those lifts go. I'm going to have to get a map of this mountain. I think it is just to the top of that hill because oh, I think that's the top, top of the, of the world. Lift right there. Yeah, this top of one here. Oh, goodness. Get some bumps now. There's the top of the lift here, and then the, yeah, the one up the mountain. I think it just goes yeah. to that right one, that one peak right there. Oh, goodness. Well, so much for the smooth air, I guess. Yeah. And I know this valley. I can go up all the way through to... Uh, I can't remember the name of the place, but I know I can take that. Yeah, yeah. That takes you up to Lewis Creek. That's it. So if you can see that uh, highway interchange down below us in front of us down there, that's, yep. Mon that's Monty Creek right there. Okay. So that's the highway that goes down to Vernon Armstrong and all that stuff. Right. It's hard to know. We might be able to get a, shot, uh, get a view of Lac Lejeune. I can see it from here. I guess it must have been three weeks ago, but it seems like a last week. I came through here on my motorcycle. Yep. And holy smoke, weather changed quick. <laughs> Take it right there is the junction of Campbell Creek Road. Right, yep. And it goes over that way. Yep. Okay. 
Yeah, that's exactly it, yep. I'm fascinated with all the stuff in the hills. Yeah. Lots of neat things to look at. So we're just passing over Highway 5A. Highway 5A is the one. It'll be right below us here pretty quick. It should be. That's that canyon where it would be a killer if you were on a pedal bike going from the turn off to Campbell Creek up. Yeah. They don't have bike lane. It's really horrid. Oh, wow. Double lane going up. Oh, like, okay. For the cars. Yeah. And the trucks and that. And it's just super dangerous. Oh, wow. It's so neat. I just love this. I can see every all the places I've been and places I want to go to. Yeah. Yeah, so we're just coming up on Lac Lejeune here. Yeah, does it look like part of the lake is frozen over? Looks like it, yep. Yeah. Huh. Eventually how it freezes, like you'd think it would kind of freeze from the outside air or something, but it's just like patchy of uh, all the yeah. patches of stuff. I was kind of hoping we could sneak back in right toward the airport, but uh, I still don't really see a break in the clouds over there. Whew. And with Radio Big Trust for Tango, about a three and a half mile final for two seven, full stop. Ah, MacArthur Island right here, perfect. Yeah. When we first moved here, we walked this quite a bit at this time of the year. Yeah. Where we had our dog. <laughs> now we can't go back. And Victor Oscar Tango's backtracking for him. Victor Oscar Tango, Roger. Was that what you do? You go back down the runway? Uh, yep. Oscar, Oscar, oh, wow. Over junction, final. Yeah, there are taxiways that we could take if we had to, but it's just for us being down here, it's kind of easier if we can just kind of turn back around and sneak back down the runway. Yeah. But the folks at Tower was really good about it. If there's no traffic coming in or whatever, it's never a problem. Hi there, it's Paul from the future. So I never actually recorded a proper extra for this video. Um, so yeah, there isn't one, but yeah, it was a great day. It was a great flight, had a lot of fun, and I can't wait to do this more with more uh, awesome people and, and, and go sightseeing and flying and stuff. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a month. Okay, bye. Also, if you spend any time around flying YouTube, one thing you'll always hear people say is that it's always okay to ask for help. Never be shy to ask for help, ask for clarification. Flying is about staying safe, so do that. Amos Radio is just the Gulf of Trust Tanko. Shasta Gulf Victor Oscar Tango Camels Radio. Golf of Oscar Tango, I just want to confirm I'm out of the way of that traffic that was coming in from the southeast. They said they have me visual, I don't have them. Hi, Victor Oscar Tango, no, I use well behind you now, not a problem at all. Victor Oscar Tango, Roger, thanks very much.